Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. And welcome to a rather damp, but beautifully sunny, Great Missenden. And although it may be uh, a little damp under tyre, it doesn't dampen my enthusiasm for today's bike review, because the motorcycle I'm riding today is the Honda VFR 1200F, a bike that I've always, always loved the look of. It's a bike that was around at the time I was learning to ride motorcycles, and it was kind of my poster bike, if you like. The sort of bike that I dreamt of riding. It's only taken me, what, 11 years to actually get on one of these things. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be riding the bike today. It's another of my classic reviews here on the channel. Stick around, stay tuned. I'll tell you what I think of it. So welcome back to the channel and one of my, what I call, classic reviews. Now I always get uh, pulled up on what I call a classic bike. For me, a classic bike is a bike that uh, was around, that was interesting before I actually had my license. I got my full license only back in 2012, so about 10 years ago now. And at that time, obviously, I was very keen and enthusiastic on bikes, as I am now. And there were some beautiful machines around, and one that really caught my eye was this, the VFR 1200F from Honda. Now, it has to be said, it was a bike that didn't see, at the time, great sales success. I never really understood why at the time, because I thought it looked beautiful, albeit maybe a bit much for me at my limited experience riding capability at the time. On paper, it's a fantastic machine. Bulletproof Honda V4 engine. Shaft drive, beautiful looks. What's not to like? Well, before we get into all of that, let me just uh, show you around the bike a little bit more, show you some of the, what the design of this bike's like before we get into the riding. All right, let's take a look at some of the design features on the mighty VFR 1200F then. I think this is an absolutely lovely looking machine. I've always uh, loved this for, ver for various reasons. The front end, I think, looks lovely. There's something about this fairing design that reminds me of a lion. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Um, I love these uh, air scoops here, look, that sort of come round in, well, I don't know what you call them, but there is actually an air scoop in there that funnels air into the, uh, into the air box, I guess. But it all looks really nice the way it's done. I love the uh, built-in indicators to the mirrors. They just look like high quality items, don't they? They look really really nice excuse the camera mount on that one uh, beautifully finished in the usual Honda way uh, coming around the side here nice VFR 1200F motif on the side there uh, I love the single sided swing arm on here and even that exhaust I don't find that offensive uh, this was the time probably about Euro 3 Euro 4 coming in so they had to do this kind of thing but I think they've done a reasonable job I always love the design of this rear wheel the single sided swing arm looks absolutely lovely this wheel needs a bit of a clean up sorry I didn't do that but uh, I think that looks beautiful it did come as well with side panniers. I took them off just because I like the looks of it without that and the top box is handy for all my vloggy kit. There's the uh, the shaft drive, uh, absolutely brilliant addition so you don't have to worry about uh, chain maintenance, anything like that. The seat on here, they've got this lovely sculpted design and the VFR tank pad on here as well, I really like that. And then coming down to the switch gear, all nice and simple. Uh, nothing complicated about this bike, no electronics to speak of. You've got adjustable levers here for span, both the brake and the clutch have got that. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the switch gear. Dead simple, nothing complicated about that. Um, what else have we got to point out here? That's probably about it in terms of the design of the bike. I think she looks an absolute beaut. I'm not sure white is my favourite colour. The paint is lustrous and metallic looking on here. Uh, but yeah, I think I'd probably go for one of the other colours. I really liked the sort of uh, bronze colour one that they did, but uh, I think a beautiful looking bike. Anyway, enough of that. It's all subjective, of course. Let's get back on and ride it some more. Okay, so we've established she looks nice, but how does she ride? Let's nip out here quick and find out. Listen to this engine, absolutely lovely. Smooth as you like. I love uh, four cylinder bikes. This being an old school sports tourer, behind. Hell yeah. Means that to me, the four cylinder engine is absolutely suited to this because it's beautifully smooth as I've intimated. And it means that you could ride for hours on end on this bike without being worried by engine vibes or anything like that. That said, I'm doing, what, 55 miles an hour behind this car at the moment. I've got slight buzziness through the seat. But I'm in third gear, they're going to have to go to fourth, that disappears. I haven't got time to get past this person. Yes, I have. Absolutely loads of 
can go on here. So if you're going off on your tours on the motorway or whatever, no problems at all. Getting a move on and getting to your destination for your tour. Right, let's get back to my usual route for these classic views then and see what she's all about. As ever, first thing that uh, strikes me as I ride the bike is its comfort. It's riding position, the seat, etc. What's that all like? Well, riding position wise, it feels quite sporty, but in a sports tour away. So, this is an old school bike. It feels quite large. If you're a larger person, this bike would be absolutely fine. By feeling quite sporty, I mean my legs feel quite tucked up. They're at an acute angle. But I find that comfortable. There's not loads of weight. Oh, super bumpy there. Not loads of weight on my wrists. In fact, if I want to, I can pretty much sit completely upright. The seat itself is quite hard. There's not a lot of padding. But it's spacious. I can move around a lot. So once again, if you're a a larger person you'll find a comfy spot but yeah overall I'd say this is a very comfortable bike which of course it should be as a sports tourer it's very similar actually riding position rise to the uh, Trump Sprint ST that I rode recently if you've not seen that video that's a very similar sort of bike a competitor to this actually go and check out the video I'll put a link in the corner to that one yeah it feels very much like that in terms of its seat position wide handlebars Lovely comfortable place to be actually. Really no weight on my wrists. But you can get nicely tucked down if you want to behind this screen. If you want to give it the beans. The screen is quite wide actually. I'm getting wind only from probably midway up my helmet onwards. My shoulders are quite well protected. And the lower half of my body with this fairing and so on means I'm nice and protected from the wind complaints on wind protection. Talking about the windscreen, it's not adjustable in any way that I can tell. So uh, if it doesn't work for you that windscreen, tough. <laughs> it's actually quite a simple motorcycle this, in today's terms. Now back in 2011, this is a 2011 example, this was Honda's flagship motorcycle and you know it's got no electronics on it to speak of. It does have a little LCD screen over here which I quite like, very clear to read. The dash itself is very clear, this big rev counter in the middle dominates what you're looking at all the time. Speed on the left in LCD form, a proper fuel gauge which I like. And on the right side you've got your temperature, odometer, gear position indicator, temperature gauge, basically everything you need, nothing else besides. No riding modes on this, no heated grips as standard. And that in fact was one of the complaints at the time of this bike, it being a big touring bike, it was lacking some of the uh, niceties, luxuries that were starting to come in at that time, like adjustable screens, heated grips, as standard. Even ABS, this one, I don't think has a standard. Ride quality though, through here, these roads are notoriously bumpy, one of the reasons why I come down here. And the suspension is very nice, I would say it's in that Goldilocks zone, it's not too firm, it's not too soft. I suspect if you're on dry roads, these roads are very slippery today, quite damp as I've said, so I'm not going to push too hard. But on dry roads, I imagine this bike would be a lot of fun to push on. Before we talk any more about how she rides, let's jump off the bike again, talk you through the specs. All right, so those all important specs then, as usual, I've written them down. Let's go through the numbers quickly on this, shall we? Starting off, as we always do, with the engine. Here we are, this is this big 1237cc V4 uh, four-cylinder lump, 160 brake horsepower and 95 foot-pounds of torque. So uh, no lack of power there. Uh, lovely engine on here. Uh, let's go down the front here, the brakes. We've got twin discs on here, as we can see. 320 uh, mil twin discs. This one does have ABS, in fact. I'm not sure if that was standard or not, as I say. Uh, at the rear, it's got a 276 mil disc. Uh, so quite a small one, but the usual the usual game there. Suspension wise, uh, on the front, it's got 43 mil uh, forks on the front and uh, they've got preload adjustment on the top there. You can see on there that we've got preload adjustment. Uh, on the rear, it's what they call Pro-Link adjustable. I don't know if we can actually see anything of the suspension at the rear. Let's come around, there we go. We can see the adjuster there uh, for the suspension at the back uh, and that's adjustable for preload and rebound. Uh, the seat height on here, very friendly, 815 millimetres. Let's come back around in the sunshine so you can see that slightly better. 
better. Uh, as I mentioned before, nicely sculpted out, but uh, maybe a little bit lacking in padding, quite hard, but nice and low. You can get your feet on the deck easily. I'm only uh, five foot eight and I can find this very easy to manage, even though the weight is 276 kilograms, which is probably the Achilles heel of this bike. It was heavy uh, for this sort of machine. Tank capacity, 18 and a half litres, uh, which is okay, but not massive for a sports tourer. Uh, electronics wise, uh, well, not a lot, as I said before. One of the criticisms at the time was it wasn't that well accomplished as far as electronics, which was just starting to come in. Price wise, this one is on the website. We'll talk more about it later, but £5,487, uh, this motorcycle with 9,856 miles on the clock. What else to say? I think really just feels like a quality machine. The usual Honda build quality, the paint scheme is lustrous on this. One or two little dings on this particular example because it is 11 years old after all, but uh, beautiful in the sunshine. I hope you agree. Alrighty, that's it for uh, the spec. Let's get back on, ride us some more. Right, welcome back aboard the bike. I'm going up one of my favourite bumpy roads here. And actually, it feels alright, you know. This suspension, I mentioned it was in the Goldilocks zone. It seems fine. Handling wise, though, you do know you are on that heavy bike. You do notice that high weight factor on here. Not so much when you're riding it, more when you're pushing it around, moving in and out of the garage, that sort of thing does feel a heavy lump and that's one of the again one of the criticisms of the bike at the time it was quite heavy compared to its competitors but when you're riding it that can be seen as an advantage on this type of bike because around these corners it just feels planted you have to give it a bit of counter steer to get it around the corners but it because of its weight it does feel solid and planted on the road but again comparing it to that uh, sprint st from triumph that i rode a while back it has nowhere near the agile feel that that bike had. I guess it's down to what you like. Down one of my favourite little black roads. I'm not going to go nuts, but... Yeah, the engine's got a great note on here. Need to just sort of little open sweepers down here. Yeah, she feels lovely through here. Now that suspension is just about right. Yeah, very nice. Actually, that's where you notice the hard seat as well, actually. Maybe a little bit of an aftermarket seat would be in order if you're going to do some long rides. You just try the brakes, nothing behind me. Front brake. Feels all right on here. I mean, this bike is... Uh, Say 2011 example, so what's that 11 years old? And the brakes feel just as good as anything today, nice and progressive, not grabby. Just try the rear, yeah, the rear's fine, usual sort of thing. Right, let's just uh, have a quick black down here, see how she fares. Still hooks up her skirt and goes, I tell you. You can feel every one of those, what, 163 brake horsepowers? Yeah, quick. I would say it feels quicker than the Sprint ST, which didn't quite have the power that this bike has. Clutch on here feels quite nice and light, actually. It's not too heavy. You'd think for a big old engine like this, a big heavy bike, it might feel heavy, but no, actually, it feels all right. And the gearbox, I've had no forced neutrals. I've had no trouble finding neutral. Absolutely fine. I wouldn't say it feels the most, what I would say, snickable gearbox in the world. It doesn't feel that positive as you go through the box, which is unusual for a Honda. But I've certainly ridden with far worse gearboxes. There's no, no issue there whatsoever. So yeah, as I said at the start of the video, I've always wanted to uh, have a go on one of these. And I never quite understood why they didn't sell. It was things like the maybe not quite the facilities that other competitors had at the time in terms of electronics and so on i guess the elephant in the room was its big weight but honestly that wouldn't put me off having one I, I think they're beautiful bikes at the time they came out they had some lovely color schemes i remember there was a particular gold one that i once saw at the uh, it was on display at the moto gp at silverstone and i rather fell in love with that i thought that looked beautiful I know they did a black one, of course, this white one, which is possibly my least favourite colour. The great thing with a white bike, of course, is like the white helmet, you do get, you know, you do stand out on the road. I imagine two up, these would be absolutely fine. And with the top box as well, quite comfortable for your pillion. 
it does come with panniers. I took them off this particular bike just because I uh, prefer the looks of it without the panniers and I wanted to show you the back wheel and so on when we did the walk round. Gosh, what a beautiful day. These leaves are just starting to turn up. Although you're not seeing this video for a while, I don't think. I'm recording this back end of October. They were just, you know, autumn's just getting into full swing as far as the leaves are concerned. It looks beautiful out here. So this particular machine, probably long since sold since I filmed this, but it's uh, on sale at the moment at Superbike Factory for a smidge under five and a half thousand pounds. It's done under 10,000 miles, 9,867 at the time I'm riding this and offers an awful lot of motorcycle for the money. I'll stick a link below to Superbike Factory. If you've not been there before, do go and check them out. The website itself is just amazing. They are the largest used motorcycle dealer in Europe. And they have bikes for the last 20 years, all the way up to brand new bikes for sale there. You name the bike, they have it. It's well worth going to look at their website because it's very easy to use and you stick in the model of bike that you're interested in, be it something old or new, and the chances are they've got a number of them for sale. If this one is sold by the time you go there, there will be other BFR 1200Fs on the site if you go and check it out. As I say, link below to those. So thanks to Superbike Factory as ever. One, for being a sponsor of the channel and two, for making these uh, used bikes available to me. It's fantastic. I've had lots of people ask for used bike reviews on the channel. And it's very difficult to actually make that happen logistics wise. But thanks to the hookup with Superbike Factory, I'm able to do that. So thank you to you guys. So what's my summary on the VFR 1200F there? Would I have one? I suppose you have to compare it to things like the Yamaha FJR 1300, don't you? What's this car doing? Of course, the BMW RT has been around as the king of the crop for a long time. And of course, the Sprint ST and GT. I mean, on a straight like-for-like -like comparison on, on numbers, on paper, this stacks up well. The shaft drive, the V4 engine, high horsepower, the looks of the bike, I all absolutely love. But handling wise, it doesn't feel as good as the ST. So I think out of the two, I would go for that. But that's entirely a personal opinion. You know, they're both great bikes. It does feel lighter to me actually than the FJR, the Yamaha, which I also love. I think I'd possibly have this over one of those actually just because I like the idea of the shaft drive. And also, you just don't see that many of these around. So it's something a little bit different. I think it makes a really solid second-hand buy. So there we are, that's it for my uh, review. The mighty VFR 1200F, a bike I've always loved the look of. They say, you know, never meet your heroes, don't they? And I'm, I have to say, I'm not disappointed by this. I think this still looks up to date today. It's comfortable, it goes well, it looks nice. Again, if I had unlimited cash and unlimited space, I would definitely have one of these in my garage, alongside the Sprint ST. And about a dozen other classic bikes that I absolutely have loved riding. We all get caught up these days, don't we, in all the hype of new motorcycles, especially when all the new launches happen at the end of the year. We see all this new shiny stuff, and who doesn't love new motorbikes? But they are getting super expensive. There's no reason why you have to buy new to put a smile on your face, I tell you. As I say, five and a half grand, you can get something like this. And I've got a big grin on my face. I'm loving it. All right, I'm going to enjoy this sunshine some more then. Thank you for watching the video. If it's the first time you've been to my channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along. I don't just do bike reviews here on The Messenger Flyer, but I do trips and tours at home and abroad. I do a monthly bike news feature. I do bits and pieces in the garage about how to look after your bike. Basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles. I try and cover it here on Mission and Flyer. It'd be great to have you along. Alright, that's it for now though. Until next time, this has been the Mission and Flyer. Cheerio.